Well, this is the first project we're gonna work on here this morning. Tim pulled this C5 in for an oil change the other day and it's had a little bit of a coolant leak, drips every once in a while. So he replaced a couple of the coolant hoses. And then he noticed this um, elbow that's on this right hand side coming down off of the radiator swooping around going up into the water pump was leaking so we took it off in there this is this elbow here and it is all rusted out kind of from where the salt and whatever is going to meet the front end of it the front side of it so we decided to replace it however kenworth is not going to have one for like a month and these are like stupid money they're like two or three hundred dollars so this is the one for the right hand side which you have the same one for the left and this one doesn't look like it's in any better condition so they should both be replaced however we cannot get either one of them for a month and we need to get this thing going here today so he ended up going out to plum and supply warehouse <laughs> got four hose barbs a couple of elbows and then, of course, we've got some new silicone hose that we're going to replace as well. So it's kind of gaudy looking, but it's all we have for a solution to fix this problem here. Once we get this done, we're going to start working on the chopper. We ended up doing a bunch of cleanup over to Cleverly's yesterday, so that's why this has been in here for a couple of days now. We need to roll this out so that he can haul manure, and then we can concentrate on that here uh, getting the pipe off kernel processor out corn knives switched with the hay knives and it's supposed to be 60 degrees here tomorrow which is Friday and and the Saturday and that's gonna allow us for some real nice weather to do some washing because as you can see that thing needs a little bit of a wash so let's go ahead and um, get these pieces laid into place. Once I get everything laid out, I'll show you what things look like underneath the radiator on this C500. Well, I think we are finally ready to roll this out the door here. Um, this job has kind of kicked our ass here a little bit. Um, we got a little too much going on right here with the three inch elbow and all that jazz but um there was some kind of a heat exchanger on here that's why they had all that plumbing like that and we kind of just put everything back there the way it is uh the the parts are non-existent they're a month to six weeks away there was a steel tube on this side here that was leaking we'll show it to you here in a minute we kind of had to cobble that up together we have a piece of uh muffler tubing in here where i cut the the uh, coolant tube off and welded a muffler tube to the uh coolant tube we have a coolant tube on this side that I would like to replace too, but these parts are uh, out there ways. We won't see anything until the middle of January. So we've got coolant all loaded back in it, and Tim is ready to roll out the door here. Here is the um, right. one coolant tube here that I ended up cutting, and I... Uh, welded a muffler tube on because this elbow right here is just here sir you want to hold that a second this elbow is just full of holes um, you could see all of the light coming through <laughs> that was just rust that we flaked off of there uh, that tube was not leaking here yesterday when you put coolant in it was it no, and then bang it it, bang so this tube here is like three hundred dollars all it has is a uh what does it have just a straight to a three inch this tube's 300 bucks 
and that wasn't going to be until the 20th of January and then the other one was what the 10th or 11th of January but at any rate we are um, kind of maybe rolling to getting the chopper going right you got the cab vacuumed out and you're ready to pull the knives out of it Needs more vacuuming? Why'd you run out of battery? No, there's something in the hose and I can't get it out. Can't get it out. Dead mouse? Uh -oh. <laughs> Dead mouse. Yeah. I don't know if it comes out yeah, this thing comes out hard, so well. Alright, we just got Tim rolled out of the shop. This is our waste oil burner furnace. Um I went to fire this up the other day and there's a igniter that um, ignites the oil coming out of the little injector tip and the transformer is bad. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a new transformer uh, into it here and hopefully we're able to fire this up. So we're gonna roll this open here like that. And then the transformer sets right up on top here and um these two little probes here go inside the burner unit and what they do basically they're they look the same as what they look like on the outside here and they run an arc across the two of them and the injector tip is about here and what they're actually am i thinking of that right now the injector tip is back away either are it uh gets a spark so that when the oil comes out of the injector tip it has something to ignite it and then once of course it is ignited then it stays uh burning so um the other day when i tested this i got a hold of the guy i bought it from and he said if you touch a screwdriver across these two terminals and it does not um, arc you need a transformer so that's what we're going to go ahead and do We've got a new transformer in the box here and uh we're going to go ahead and throw that on there so i've got to get some tools to get this transformer off of here and then um, we'll get it fired up and hopefully that takes care of the problem that we have at hand here all right, I don't know if you're going to be able to see too much as to what I'm doing, but I've got the contactors removed, cut the zip ties. I've got two screws removed uh, from the top, and I've got two left on the bottom. Now I'm just going to unhook the two wires here uh, from the actual power supply here. I've got to get this prick down there. have two screws yet to remove here they're just little guys that one. And that one. That. a little different than the other one but not much no all right we'll go ahead and close this up
Alright, we'll turn our air on, and then we're going to have to turn the power on. force it to fire. It should start. And we have left off. So we just need to adjust the flame here a little bit. I see everything is working the way it should. I gotta adjust it a little bit. It's not quite right. It's a little hot. I can meter that. So we've got to make a few adjustments here and then. Uh, we will uh, get out of here. There's supposed to be there's supposed to be a plastic cover on here, and you're supposed to be able to see the flame through it. But it got so damn dirty, I ended up breaking it trying to clean it one day. So that's why that's not on there. So we'll go ahead and make, a, make some adjustments here, and then we'll, um, yeah, looks like it's working pretty good, though. We need to get working on that chopper, though. Well, shortly after we got this heater going, I got interrupted and had to run down and help Garrett get the crawler going. So we've got back in the shop here, and... Uh, at least it's not on fire anyways, but it is working the way it's supposed to be working. The fan's actually on right now, and it is blowing the warm air away from the actual firebox itself. So, uh, I guess we can get back to doing what we were supposed to be doing from the start of today, and that is working on the chopper. So some of you have asked about this 8320. We ran it five or six days after Jared got the engine done in it and it started building excessive pressure in the radiator. So it's got a head gasket gone or there's something wrong with the head. If you recall about six weeks or so, I guess it was longer ago than that. Jared had the rear end going this Mac here. Well, guess what? It went again. So uh they he's not sure if maybe fry didn't maybe get it together right or whatever like that so they're going to warranty that and we're going to go ahead and change the spout or we're going to work on the chopper we're going to change we're going to start with changing the spout uh we're going to take the long section out we're going to put the short section in there Sarah started working on that a while ago. She's getting that one section unbolted. We'll swing the pipe over to the center of the floor here. We'll take it off with the forklift and set it on the floor. We've got to take the spout off of the very end of it and we'll put the spout on the this part here. We'll put the spout on the um, short section the only reason why you need this longer pipe, you need it for uh, chopping corn because that, the head is 25 feet wide and your truck is a little farther away from the side of the chopper. So you put this longer spout on there, but you cannot run this longer spout for hay because it plugs. We tried it. The... Um, pipe has this bottom piece on it coming all the way down through almost to the end and you need that uh opened up if you maybe cut that out and maybe put some supports on there maybe you could get it to work for uh hay but it just it just doesn't work i don't know if this one's opened all the way or if it's just 
I guess this one is just short enough that it doesn't bother. Actually, it is open. There's only a little bit of it that is closed up, which is towards the the back side. The other thing that we have to do to this is we have to pull the, uh, well, we got to pull the kernel processor out. And I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, hay knife uh, back in it. So we've got two pails full of hay knives and um, uh, bolts there. We probably ought to put new bolts in, but I think I'm just going to use the old ones. No one's going to know, right, Sarah? No one will know. So how you make it out up there? You can't get that one? Why, is it too tight? Yeah. Well, um, I better get to work here. Well, it looks like she's got everything unplugged anyway. She's got one bolt she can't get out. We have to remove the active fill camera, which is on this right-hand side. That's a stereo camera, and that is the camera that gets used for when you want to automatically load the truck. In other words, that will uh, fill the truck and any desired fill uh, mode that you want to go in, whether you want to load the back and move to the front or the front and move to the back. So that's the active fill camera there. And then this black, there's a little black camera. That's the actual camera I use for um, opening up cornfields or whatever. And then we have a uh, wireless camera on this other side here. And that um, transmits video to uh, the guys in the trucks. Doesn't work all that great, but it's on there. So I better get to it here. Well, we have the blower pipe spout slash spout removed from the chopper. That's the long one sitting on the forks. And then we have to take the um, spout assembly off, the diverter spout, the flap. Uh, that comes off at the end, and then that's going to get bolted on to this shorter uh, section here. So I've got to remove the two cameras yet, or the, yeah, the two cameras yet. I've got the autofill camera removed. And then we'll be able to put that on the pallet rack and uh, put the other one on there. Sarah's just getting some of the crap, corn silage and stuff like that off of that spout and then that'll make that a little easier to uh, wash it. You get little bits of stuff that comes up in between here and it builds up, causes a problem. All right, we are into the following day here now. We've had a couple of other projects come in and out of the shop here. Kind of interrupted things a little bit. But we've got the short spout on there everything's all plugged in bolted up we've got the long spout here that we've already taken off and what we're working on now is we're going to get the kernel processor out and we have done some work up front here there's a ear saver panel that's right there that goes underneath this bottom feed roll i've taken that out i've got this other unit this other piece in there i've got to finish bolting that down and then we're going to flip the shear bar over we ran this is the dura liner shear bar and uh we ran it uh we ran on this side here for hay we flipped it over for corn and ran on that side so now we're going to flip it back around again and um put all the hay knives in it so we have to take these knives out these are what we used for corn we'll take those out save them for next year and then we'll go ahead and put the hay knife uh, back in but before we work on the knives we're going to take the kernel processor out here are you ready for that job yeah, yeah. So we got to get our winch hooked up and we'll show you what that's all about here once I get set up. All right, so we are getting ready to pull this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crank 
the kernel processor up out of the position it's in, and it's going to more or less pull it out of the transition chute, and then the hay chute ends up going in place of the kernel processor. And if you were going to, never done it, if you were going to run into or go into some hay in between your corn silage crop, you can just roll this up out of the way, chop some hay, then go back, put the kernel processor in, go back to corn. So once we get this cranked up, we'll be able to swing this winch over, hook onto the kernel processor, and more or less deliver it outside the chopper and set it down onto uh, the floor. So we've got it about halfway up out of here. I don't know if you can see down in here good enough. But we've unhooked the grease line and we've also um, unhook the wire harness that goes to it and then we'll have to get the actually I haven't unhooked the wire harness that goes to it. I've got to unhook that yet and then I've got to take the balance off as well. All right, we've got the kernel processor out. I just gotta get a pallet to set that down on. That fought me a little bit. I've never had that much trouble getting it out. Um, I ended up taking it from the arm with the forklift. Usually you can let that down on the ground. Not only did I have a little trouble there, but I also had trouble with getting it up out of 
oh the area where it sets down into and I don't know if I didn't have that arm hooked up right or what but you kind of forget these things from one year to the next so what we're working on now is we're re removing the corn knife and we're going to go ahead and put the hay knives back in it we'll save these knives for uh, corn next year there isn't hardly any uh, anything wore off of them at all here so this is the hard surface from uh, the tip of my fingernail to the end and there's a lot of material uh, left on these knives here so she's going to get them removed we'll flip the shear bar around uh, I'm going to say it's on the corn side now and we'll put it back on the hay side there's not a side that is specific to either crop however this shear bar is the dura liner shear bar and we put it in i think i was about halfway through third cutting and then when we went to corn i flipped it around the other way and there isn't hardly any wear on it at all so if we can get this shear bar to go all the way through uh hay in this coming year then we'll have a fresh side to start um corn on if it goes that long so we've got a couple other things to do while she's doing that i've got to finish bolting this uh deflector pan down uh you remove that so that you could put the corn ear saver in there so i've got to get them bolts tightened up and i've got to get that shear bar uh, removed and i've got to also drop that transition pan down and we've got to move the spiral band actually i shouldn't have to move it down at all it should be out of the way enough and then once we get the knives in there we'll shim it with these plates here so that we can bring that spiral band the floor up underneath the uh, knives right where it needs to be so nate was going to grab me a pallet so i could set this kernel processor on it and uh once we get these knives changed, we can start throwing some water on it here. All right, we have all of the knives removed. Sarah took all of those off. I have just gone through now and I have run uh, the wire wheel over the actual knife bed. I pulled the shear bar, flipped it, I turned it around 180 degrees, wire wheeled the, the anvil, the bed that the shear bar sits on, and I wire wheeled the back side of the, uh, the, the bottom of the shear bar. Now, there isn't any wear on this shear bar. There's just as much wear on each. It's, it's about the same on each side. So I had to write corn on here just so I didn't uh get it mixed up so we had we ran it on this side of the shear bar this was flipped around we chopped corn now this tool here this tool is used to adjust the shear bar distance from the front of the bar to this part in the drum so what we're going to do is we're going to set this tool we're going to set this against the front of the shear bar here set this on top and then in order to get our adjustment we're going to need to have the drum touch the tip of this tool right here now on this particular tool here this is 124 and a half millimeters from here to the tip on this side and on the right hand side there's 121.9 and the reason why there's two adjustments here is you'll use one side or the other based upon how much wear you have on your knives when you're going to reinstall or readjust the shear bar to a war knife. Now, when I took these knives out, I used this tool and I didn't feel we were closer to the 124 millimeters than we were the 121. 
So if you set this tool, I gotta look at it again here. Set this tool right on the top. So we're gonna have that, that bottom leading edge touching the top leading edge on the shear bar. And now we have the tip. We're hitting it with the tip. <laughs> and uh, the tip is hitting the drum. However, it is probably maybe three millimeters away from the front of the shear bar. So what we need to do here is we need to move the shear bar forward. We'll get both sides set to the drum and then we can set the knives to the shear bar. I have talked about this about every time I've done this and filmed it, we've talked about it. Uh, this is an 8,000 series chopper. On the 7,000 series choppers, they had a hole cut out here on each side and you slid a bar in and you would set the knife to the bar and then you would bring the, well, you could choose to move the shear bar in or out uh, depending on where you wanted to have it. Um, obviously, you wanted to have it out away from the knife prior to putting the knives on or else you wouldn't be able to get it in. And then once you get everything set, you would adjust your shear bar accordingly. Sarah is wire wheeling, wire wheeling? <laughs> She is cleaning up the uh, backing plates that go on the back side of the knife. So uh, we need to get the crap off of here just so that we don't have any of that debris getting in between the backing plate and the knife. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I've done these before in the vise. Um, I've found that it's just easier to Use a C-clamp, you gotta move the clamp around three times per plate, right? Yeah. How you making out with that man killer? I was using the Makita. The Makita is, is not as powerful as that man killer. Oh, yeah, yeah, so you wanna make sure you hold on to that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna adjust this shear bar and then we can start setting knives. She's got enough those backing plates done that will allow us to get started here okay we're going to show you a little trick here that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't we're going to go ahead and move the shear bar with the chopper now there's really only one of two ways to do this this is the third way uh, one, you take the shear bar motors off of each side and turn the shear bar adjuster by hand. Two, is you would get a power unit um, to plug into the motors that are on each shear bar um, and move them with uh, a power unit, move the electric motors. Now, I don't have that option, so I would have to take the motor off. Or we can do it this way, and we can have the chopper do it, which this is not as precise. Sometimes it takes a couple times of doing this. Now, to adjust the shear bar, we would press this button here, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to adjust the shear bar in. We want to move it out. So H this tab here is going to move the shear bar out and what we're going to do is we're going to press that button as soon as it starts to go to working we're going to give it a couple seconds then we're just going to shut the chopper off and we're going to check it and see if we are within distance within the distance that we need we don't want to go too far because if we go too far we're going to have to uh do it by hand anyway so we'll press this button here now we'll go and check it sometimes it's handy if you have 
somebody down here watching it and I might need to do that because I don't know if it even started to move yet because sometimes it takes a little while and I don't believe I don't believe it went to moving so I'm gonna have to uh, have somebody help me with this um, this motor here is not bad to get off that one over there is a real mongrel because of how the screws go in all right so we have had to move this three times i had to get in and out of the chopper three times jared helped me the second time and then the third time i just jumped up in there to move it just i wasn't quite satisfied with it so we've got our tool setting on the shear bar on the top and we've pushed the tool back as far as we can and the tip of it is hitting the drum and the back bottom side is just scraping the front of the shear bar so we have that right where we want it now we do have to take in account that the knives have had some use on them so they are wore just a little bit but when i took the knives out i think i explained it in the last clip when i took the knives out i measured the shear bar distance before uh, we removed the knives and I made a mental note that we were closer to the 124 millimeter than we were the 121. So that's the distance on the right hand side. I will go ahead and check the left. And again, we are just barely scraping the front side of the shear bar with the tool. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and start setting knives and we're going to set the knives uh, to the shear bar um, the reason why we just didn't want to throw the knives on there we want it to be able to get the maximum amount of capacity out of the chopper based upon how much knife we have the newer to the knives the more capacity the chopper is going to have because the capacity of the chopper is how much distance that the knife has from the very tip of the knife to the drum because as this is chopping the material this knife is coming around the material is coming into here and it's having to chop it and it's having the knife drum is having to take the material with it in other words it has to pull this material past here this drum spins at 1100 rpms and and if the faster you can keep that the the longer you can keep this drum spinning at the maximum rpms the more material material you're going to get chopped once you run into slugs and you run out of horsepower and that knife drum slows down uh that's where you start to lose your capacity so we want to be able to run the knife out to the maximum length that it's supposed to be according to how much wear the knife has so we're going to go ahead and throw these knives in well today is the last day of chopping stalks we got a wheel bearing go out of this wheel we replaced this rim and uh, actually we didn't replace the rim we replaced the tire back the beginning of bush hogging however that bearing went it ruined the hub i was able to cobble it back together uh she's gonna have to keep an eye on that can't put a dust cap on there and we can't put a seal on the back side so she's going to just grease it every so often just so we can get done because today is the last day and we're having trouble keeping a dust cap on this left wheel here too so are you all excited to be done no so man it is it's nice weather here for december what is it 13th today yeah so um well as soon as you get back you can start washing that's if i'm done washing the chopper yeah. so well all right so she's got like 25 to 30 acres left to do and um yeah and that's gonna be it for chopping stalks and we can get this tractor washed up and i want to get the quick hitch back on it 
service it heavy and then hook on to the um, corn planter so that once we get a bunch of parts in for the corn planter we can start working on it here. Does have a little wobble to it because the rim is bent. Well, we are into the following day now, and we have the knives and everything's all put into the chopper. And we're gonna get ready and wash it here. But before I do that, on this easy clean pressure washer, we had a problem with the burner not working on the hot water side, and I'm thinking it needed a transformer. I just ordered one here last week and it came the other day. So we've got the old one out and we're gonna put the new one in and hopefully that does the trick so that you can have some hot water to wash with, right? So all I've gotta do is put that back in, hook up the wires and uh, hopefully it takes off. We had to put a transformer in on the waste oil heater as well and what the transformer does is it's going to work on these igniters right here. And these igniters are up in the burner, kind of like the same concept as the waste oil heater. However, this is fired with, well, we use diesel fuel on it. Um, the tips are up in there. It puts about as much of a spark as a spark plug would make and um, it puts that spark right near where the fuel is injected into the burner and that's what keeps the fuel uh, burning. So we'll go ahead and hook this up and hopefully it does the trick. Well, we know more than got the pressure washer back together and Alex called and she's got a broken blade on the bush hog. So we're on our way over to the field now, which is like, 15 miles away and we're going to go ahead and get her fixed up we're going to go ahead and replace both blades i've got two blades with me anyways we're going to replace both blades just because them blades on that bush hog are so wore out that um if we don't we're going to run into a balancing issue so we'll be to the field here and just a few minutes and we'll get them new blades on there and then we'll run back to the shop here and get the chopper washed um it's just interruption after interruption after interruption today so you broke it how much do you have left you couldn't get through the season without breaking a blade so what we're gonna do here is we are gonna replace both blades because this blade being as wore out that it is, it's gonna run off balance. And um, on this particular machine here, that one runs clockwise and these two here, the center and the wing, they run counterclockwise. Looks like your wheel's doing pretty good. How many times have you greased it? Twice. So we're trying to milk this along. Dairy farmers love to milk stuff, you know, so we're gonna milk it. We're gonna milk that along. So you can see this side here Oh boy, that's a little floppy. How much do you have left? This one, I almost done with this one. That's all I a couple done. times down back, down and back. You got that little one. So you haven't got much left. We can, we can get that to run. So let's go ahead and change out the blades on this one side here. And then what we're going to have to do is obviously replace these other blades once she gets done. But. 
the main thing is is just to get this on there and what i've done in the past that one's not worth keeping but if there was a little more life in that you keep that one and then what you do is you go ahead and use it for when you have one fall off next time around and you have something that you can put on that's comparable uh with another used one but look at that one there in the center wow yeah we're down thin so let's go ahead and get this changed I think we're good to go right back to cotton yep. this ain't gonna cut any better with brand new blades on it it's just not gonna vibrate yeah. it's the only difference that's one thing about these now uh one might say that this uh cutter here is wore out it ain't wore out it's just used is all the deck on it is uh just about completely shot. We have replaced these stump humpers here a couple of times and we've replaced the gearboxes on it. There used to be like a, oh, like a baffle piece here and that came off. We, it got caught in there. We actually cut it off with the torch and um, you could see these little chains and whatever. I mean, they are just, wore out but you know what this thing cuts just as good as a brand new one so um she's gonna have to get after it here no more phone calls all right no more bearings and no more blades so we almost had a field fire here years ago back when we did fall plowing moldboard plowing I would get the field on fire. I'd, I'd plow a spot down the edge on each side and I'd get the field burning. And um, that was fun. Yeah. Then you didn't have this stuff building up and getting caught in the plow. And it was just like plowing, like clean stubble. So uh, that ought to do you. Keep an eye on that wheel bearing and hopefully you can get this unit home without this hub falling apart but it looks like it's doing the trick it, it, have any has there been any garbage to get jammed up around that that you've noticed on the inside yeah but it looks like you got some clean grease there so you you should be able to maintain that so 
Well, I'll go ahead. I'll get the torches cleaned up here. And I'll grab those pieces. We've got a couple of molten bolt pieces and whatever. I'll grab that. So, all right. Well, we are slowly gaining on it. Got all the heavy stuff knocked down. Now we just got to roll underneath it and do the bottom. Um, there's a lot of stuff on it. Boy, it was... I've never seen it this dirty. So, um, we're just going to keep at it. I'm not going to be able to get it done tonight. We've got the heads to do yet. And uh, we'll have to get into that tomorrow. Damn sun's going to be going down here pretty quick. gonna about do it for this video here we've got to run around this with some soap and with some water yet i've got this panel here off not only to be able to get in behind it and get everything clean there but we need to replace this bracket for the hydraulic drive motor for that suction blower drive unit there um i got interrupted yesterday while we were working on the pressure washer I had to run a couple of blades over to Alex, and I don't know at this point if I touched base with you whether or not we got that pressure washer going. We replaced the transformer for the igniter, and uh, it didn't work right away. I ended up calling the company, and they had me test a couple of things, and we have determined that it needs a high pressure switch or something like that. We've got it hot wired together so that the burner will work. And I used it quite a bit on the chopper here. However, when I was underneath the chopper, I didn't use the burner because it creates too much steam and I wanted to be able to see what I was doing and the sun was starting to go down and um, we got it, we got it done. But um, that is gonna do it folks. I think this video is about long enough. I want to thank you for watching, and we will catch you at the next video.